And now it's time for learning more about our lives as students, our body as humans, and our future as happy, healthy people. The APU and AUV Podcast Network presents the Student Health and Happiness Podcast with your host Russell Freeman. Welcome to the AUV Student Health and Happiness Podcast. I'm Dr. Russell Freeman. I'm a professor of health science and philosophy at American University in Vietnam and a chiropractic physician from the United States. Today, we're taking a closer look at making the transition into university student life with our special guest, Mr. Michael Hayes. Michael is our student counselor at American University and also at APU High School. Michael, welcome back to the show. Always a pleasure to be here. Nice to see you again, Russell. Good to have you back. So we've been talking about all kinds of interesting things in this subject having to do with time management, uh, with motivation, uh, handling distractions and concentration, with homesickness and depression, and even social problems and choosing a major. Now we want to focus on resources and relationships. So what happens when a student lacks the right resources. We all need that. We all know that to achieve academic success, you have to have access to materials and books and tools and teachers to talk Paper. with and all, all kinds of other yep. things. So, what happens when a student lacks those resources? Well, it really hinders the student's achievement, uh, and students oftentimes don't really reach their full potential, or they may not truly enjoy the course they're taking if they don't have the things they need to be successful. Um, students, whether at APU or AUV or any university setting around the world, are always going to need certain things. And I always try to talk to my students um, and show them the tools they're going to need to be successful in school. Do you think that someone can go through university or even high school with a, with a mobile phone? You know, it's unfortunate, but I think some students actually are trying to get through their high school or college experience using just a mobile phone. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't recommend it. You do need a device, a computer or a tablet at a minimum. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but uh, you need all the tools at your disposal so you can be successful. I see students relying on their mobile phone for almost everything these days, and that includes schoolwork. And I really try to discourage my students from doing that for a lot of reasons, one of which it's really bad for their health. Yeah, it, it's addictive. It's bad for your health. You don't know. We don't know what the long term uh, repercussions might be. And you're just trying to really <laughs> cope with developing some skills that maybe make you look like you're busy and you're really not accomplishing much in the way of work. If you're trying to proofread something that you wrote right. on a cell phone, good luck with that. It's yeah. going to be a bad product. Yep. And you're going to think I'm either not a good student or I just don't enjoy doing this. Yep. Cell phones were not devised to do research. They were devised to find out where's the local laundromat. Right. It's nice to be able to quickly Google something and find, you know, where the nearest McDonald's is or, you know, some quick answer to some crazy question. But to do a project or work with classmates, um, you really need a computer and the proper tools to accomplish the well, goals. Who do you ask? I mean, do you, do you t reach out to your teachers for that? Or? Well, hopefully, you know, you, teachers are always a good resource. They can at least express to you the type of tools you're going to need. But then to actually get the tools, you know, you want to ask your parents. You know, uh, students, by the time they graduate from high school, they generally have a pretty good sense of what they're going to need, but uh, it's always a good topic to talk about before you take off for university. Do parents get involved in, in, at this stage? Sometimes. It uh, depends on the parents' resources. You know, not all students are very wealthy, and some students are always sort of struggling, and parents are doing the best they can, but there are solutions to every situation if you just ask. 
do students use libraries anymore? You know, uh, libraries are still a very important part of student learning, whether in a high school environment like APU or a university environment like AUV or any university. I saw a college just the other day. I think it was University of British Columbia. They had 30 libraries on campus. Um, So... Libraries are not just for gathering facts and information, but they're often meeting places, social places, places where you can go and unwind. I found many of my hours as a graduate student in the library were some of the best hours I had of learning. I agree with that. And I also found it um, it was a coping strategy um, when I was having difficulty concentrating because of all the distractions around me. The the library environment actually, I think it supported my learning hormones. Yeah. I mean, libraries nowadays, they're going to have study rooms. They're going to have group study rooms. They're going to have computers. They're going to have all the latest office equipment to produce documents and colored documents and, you know, be prepared for class when you show up. That's right. And there's no phones going off. There's no TV. Your little brother isn't running around, breaking exactly. things, yep. and the dog's not asking you to go right. outside, all those sorts of things. So I think libraries are greatly underutilized, and everybody should become lovers of libraries, in my opinion. Um, how about relationships? Gosh, this, is, this seems to be endemic. I, d- I don't have any recollection of not having relationship <laughs> issues uh, through, through university. I was learning how to have relationships and making a lot of mistakes, I'm sure. Um, And although they're beneficial and probably maybe one of the most important experiences that you have in university, they can be very stressful too. They can take a lot of time and they can interfere with your study. Um, Your relationships are with your roommates, with your teachers, with the people that are around you at all times. And so some people are still handling relationships the way they did when they were a little kid. They wait for, until people create a relationship for them and define what it's supposed to be. And, and the college experience, the opportunity to go off to university, if you come to AUV, you're going to be mixing with lots of students and you're going to have a chance to make new relationships. And if you're an APU student coming to AUV, you're going to have prior relationships many times where you can continue to foster that relationship and improve upon it, make it even better. But for those students that have come to APU and are going overseas, building relationships with new people, like you say, is, is a really stressful thing. Um, Students, aren't always that well equipped for just going in and seeing a professor during office hours. They may not know what office hours are. Students may not feel comfortable just striking up a conversation with someone that they've never met before, someone that looks different. Also, you know, I always encourage students, talk to people that are working in these universities, the cafeteria people, the janitors, the the campus police, Anyone you come in contact with, talk to them, reach out. That's how you develop the skill sets for developing small talk and uh, making friends in life. Well, you're basically going to have two kinds of relationships in university. You're going to have academic-related relationships and you're going to have social relationships. Right, the social ones. So the social ones tend to distract you, especially when they're not going well. And, you know... Everybody hopes to fall in love when they're in university. And many do. And and many do. uh, And they fall out of love too. And And sometimes not at the same time as the partner that they have. So how does somebody deal with falling um, on their face, basically in a relationship when they're they're heartbroken and they're at school? Uh, How do they handle that? Again, being in that environment is a great place to have that experience. There will be people around you that will support you and understand your needs. There will be people you can talk to to keep your expectations realistic. And you'll have people that, you know, are generally concerned about your well-being. I think students also need to learn how to manage their friend relationships, their colleague relationships. They need to catch up with, with people, but 
between classes on breaks, not during class. Exactly. They yeah. need to separate their social life from their academic life. And they can study together, that's fine, but keep it about studying. So the other thing is about understanding your needs, knowing that you get distracted easily, knowing that it's hard for you to concentrate with other people around. You should take steps so that you are putting yourself in the best relationships and environment to succeed. And the last thing is about learning how not to depend on other people for being happy or healthy or your lifestyle choices. You need to work on your relationship with yourself and decide right. what's best for you, what's the best way to get it, and anybody that doesn't help you achieve that goal doesn't belong in your life at that time. Right. Set some boundaries and uh, take care of yourself. Put yourself first. Set those boundaries. And with that thought, we're going to conclude this part of our episode. Thank you very much for attending today. I'd like to thank our guest, Mr. Michael Hayes, for coming today. And thank thank you. you for listening.